you from Go Media Stadium over in New Zealand. Looking at, obviously, the Warriors, we'll start up with their lineup, is Tayani, Dallin, Watin, Zelezniak, Rocco Berry, Mr. Roger Tuavasa Shek making his NRL return in not a trial game, Marcelo Montoya, Luke Metcalf, and Sean Johnson, Adam Fanua Blake, Wade Egan, Mitchell Barnett, Jackson Ford, Kurt Capewell, and Tohu Harris, with the interchange of Freddie Lassick, Tom Ayle, Bunty Afoa, and Dylan Walker, and the extended benches for those that are listening to this and not watching. You've got Adam Pompey, Jazz Taviga, Tamari Martin, Mr. Ali Leotua, and Jacob Lemon. Now, Baxter, I'll throw it to you. Obviously, a big, big clash for Adam Fanua Blake, who will make, I guess, the little trip across the pond later next year. He will come across to the Cronulla Sharks. But we'll talk more about this Warriors side before we talk about both sides. Talk to me about the Warriors. Talk to me about their squad and what you expect from this game. Yeah, look, you're going to miss uh, the big man, Chan Nickel Kustak, at the fullback role. So that's going to be a bit of an empty spot um, for this game. Um, you got Roger there who could play fullback for this game if you really need to, but I see him more of a, a centre now being that he's trained, played uh, preseason games in that role. So um, there's not much to sort of negative on this. Uh, they all around, they look all right. Um, one game shy of a grand final appearance last year. So um, hopefully they come out and they can do the home crowd proud. Is the Wise bandwagon continuing this year? Obviously, they like you said, they were they were one point away from the final, top four. Can they do it again? Ah, uh, look, anything's possible. Um, any, anything's really possible. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I, I'm not starting the Wise um, train right now, but uh, I reckon if you go three games in and they're big results, I think um, the Wise will come back. And I guess, obviously, Sean Johnson, arguably most people thought he was going to win the Dally M last Rob, year. Rob, he didn't. Rob, Rob me and you Rob. both have our opinion that he was Rob. Rob, but obviously he didn't win the Dally M last year. Arguably 99% of listeners and 99% of YouTubers did think he deserved it. Do you see him having another season that good? And is Luke Metcalf the player next to him to drag him forward if he does have a bad game? Oh, look, Shawnee, like, it's hard to tell. Um it's really hard to tell given his age of about, oh, I'm going to say, I think I'm going to say he's like 32, 33. 33 on the uh, money. 33 on the money. See, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to even look it up, and I, I just guessed it. Um, yes, he's a year older, a year wiser, but that could be meaning a year slower. Um Maybe he's still got it, maybe he doesn't, but just we just have to wait and see. I ha- really, I hadn't watched any preseason games. Um, trying to sort out my KO sort of situation, wasn't loading. Someone hacked into it, rather, rather, rather. It's all good. Well, like we did mention, obviously, they did have a great season last year, and I think for anyone, I guess. Outside, obviously, the um, Waz bandwagon, I think anyone is now saying that that is their second team moving forward. So it will be interesting to see how they go. Like we said, they have the Sharks, a big game. Then they have to travel to Melbourne to play Melbourne. So it's not the easiest start to the season for the Wars, but I'm sure like a lot of our fans are from New Zealand that have commented on previous videos, they'll jump in. They'll let us know how they think they're going to go and where they're going to finish this year. But let's talk about the Sharks. It's a Cronulla Sharks side. As you can see, Nico Hines was named to play. You've got Will Kennedy, Sione Katoa, Jesse Ramian, CFI, Talakai, Ronaldo Militalo, Braden Trindle, Nico Hines, like I said, has been cleared to train at this stage. Uh, to play, sorry, Oregon Kafusi, Blake Braley, Royce Hunt, Britton Nakora, Teague Wilton, Mr. Cameron McInnes, Dale Finucan on the bench with Jack Williams, Toby Rudolph, and Thomas Hazelden with an extended bench of Kale Eero, not pronouncing that name, Daniel Atkinson, Marini Hirota, and Jaden Beryl. So, a big, big in with Nico Hines. Um, he did face the media, has said he is good to go. What do you make of this side? And I guess for me, my question mark go around, they're arguably in a premiership window or moving towards it. They've got Fanua Blake coming in next year. He does step him forward. What do you think of this lineup and where do the Sharks realistically have to finish this year to give their fans hope that when Fanua Blake comes in, hey, we actually have a chance at this premiership? 
doesn't matter where they finish, they're allergic to finals football. They haven't won a finals game in I don't know how long. They just like, like, they just like to hum along, win all these games in the mid season. It gets to September, it gets a bit warmer. Everyone else is on Mad Monday, and they're like, "Fuck, I wish I was with them." So they like to just bow out and back to back losses and get out of here. And you know, it doesn't matter where they finish this year, Tony. Um, do you really think a team that has and if we were Blake joining them makes them better on paper, yes. But this side, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot to do with it. Um, to do with it, um, I, I'm going to call it early. There, are, uh, Craig Fitzgibbon. He's he's a he's the leading surgeon here, and this Cronulla Shark side is a body that's got open heart surgery, and he's got to try to find a way to make this team um, back humming again. Uh, like they were 2016, 2017, um, around those years. But uh, you, you can play, you can play good all year. It comes finals time, if you're not, if you're not up to it, um, yeah, you're just aller- you're just allergic to September, and that's fine. If that's what they are, just they're just gonna admit it. They're allergic to September, and that's fine. That's fine. That's all it is. I reckon, I reckon they're more allergic towards when it starts to get to the middle of September. They like getting there and then they kind of crumble once they get there. Maybe it's the allergies. Maybe there's something in the air. But that's, that's what, I'm, I'm telling you, man, they just see other people on Mad Monday like, man, we could be on this. Let's just quickly get this over and done with. Hey. Well, let, let, let's talk about how they get to finals. Obviously, they do and have finished quite high last year. Um, and a lot of the talk was around their draw. And a lot of Again, the talk they got an easy draw. They got, Another easy draw. So I guess what do you make of that? They go to obviously New Zealand. It's not an easy task. I don't, then they play the Bulldogs at home, the West Tigers, and then the Raiders at home. So what do you make of that early start and obviously the easy draw? Is it that they're not ready to play the big teams come finals? Or is it because... I no, I, I think... I don't know how they got the, the another easier draw compared to others. Uh, this is a team that finished, what, second two years ago, that finished in... The bottom half of the top eight last year, but yet they still get an easier draw. Shouldn't the easier draw go to like the West Tigers or something that finished last to sort of give them? Yeah, some the, home? the West Tigers are getting an easy draw if they get twenty-seven buys and get two points every week to make the finals. <laughs> but in saying in saying that, like, shouldn't it shouldn't it be the team that finished first gets the hardest draw that compared to? The person, if you know, the team that finished last, who gets the easier draw, so like they're on the more. I mean, um, should... don't forget though, the NRL likes to say it's a randomized, a randomized. No, I, I don't. I don't. I, don't I, I was agreeing with. I, I would agree with you. Maybe, maybe three, four years ago, but not anymore. I don't think this is. I think they need to pull the. They just need to pull the trigger and just play everybody twice. That way, no one can say, "Oh, you had an easier draw," because. We play each other, each other twice. I know that kind of, uh, sort of conflicts with the um, state of origin and everything else that they want to push in there um, during the season. So, uh, do you reckon? I guess, I guess for me, do you reckon more games is the answer, or do you reckon play everyone once, don't have games during Origin, have a few more international games throughout the season I, to kind of push it forward? I'm 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 a bit of two I'm a bit of, I'm, a, I'm a foot in two cans here at the moment. I'm either either play each other once and have a full month off in the middle of the year where everybody's playing uh, international footy, which is where where the Australians are playing Saturday of Origin, and you got like New Zealand play England, Samoa play Tonga, um, or Cook Islands versus PNG. You got that going on, or you play everybody twice. And you just got to work around state of origin, and everybody's got to play. I'm I'm happy with either, but um, this thing about oh, you've got an easier draw, or this person's got an easier draw, like I I don't think it's randomised anymore, and it's just uh, becoming a bit of a joke. Um, You know, as I said, I think I I think that the West Tigers, being that they finished last, should have the easiest draw on paper um, when it gets spit out given that they finished last last year. Yeah, I, I definitely think, like you said, it's either you go, everyone plays everyone twice. I mean, that's the easiest way to go about it. 
or everyone plays everyone once in the last four games, you play four random teams in the top eight and the bottom eight play four random teams in the bottom eight, whatever it is. Like we said, year on, year out, they say it's a randomized draw, but the same teams seem to be gifted, gifted moving forward and the same teams seem to get screwed moving forward. So we'll see how that one plays out. We'll see if they do change it. There's talks and other teams coming in. So it's going to extend the season by an extra game by everyone if we did do that. So maybe we just have to get to, say, 20 teams, something like that, play everyone once and then call it a day. But we'll talk a bit more about that on a future episode, Baxter. Let's jump into the predictions. I'm going to go with a little bit of an upset in this one. I think it actually goes against who I tipped in my footy tipping, but I'm going to go with Cronulla. I think Nico Hines being in this squad is massive. And I think, like you mentioned, Chance being out here is a massive, massive loss for the New Zealand Warriors. He was instrumental in them moving forward. And like you said, they might shuffle. You might see Roger go back to fullback if they need it. But I just think the experience of Hines coming off such a disappointing end for the season gets the job done. So I'm going to go Cronulla 1-12. to How about yourself? Well, I am I am not agreeing with either of those uh, um, predictions. I'm going Warriors 13 plus to do the boys at home proud. And, and now it's back to trying to get all the fans on board after he pissed off all the Tongans and Samoans during the World Cup. He's trying to get the Wars no, trade no, no, on no. the bandwagon. The Samoans love me, the Tongans don't, but that's okay. <laughs> show me love, show me love. Bro. I mean... <laughs> Regardless, I think this is going to be an absolute cracking game to kick off uh, Friday night football. But we'll see how this one plays out. Both teams looking to go a few steps better than what they did last year. But Baxter, two Friday night games. It is the New Zealand Warriors versus the Cronulla Sharks. It's coming at you from Go Media Stadium over in New Zealand. Looking at, obviously, the Warriors, we'll start up with their lineup is Tayani, Dallin, Watin, Zelezniak, Rocco Berry, Mr. Roger Tuavasa-Shek making his NRL return in not a trial game. Marcelo Montoya, Luke Metcalf, and Sean Johnson. Adam Vanua Blake, Wade Egan, Mitchell Barnett, Jackson Ford, Kurt Capewell, and Tohu Harris. With the interchange of Freddie Lussick, Tom Ail, Bunty Afoa, and Dylan Walker. And the extended benches for those that are listening to this and not watching. You've got Adam Pompey, Jazz Taviga, Tamari Martin, Mr. Ali Leatua, and Jacob Lemon. Now, Baxter, I'll throw it to you. Obviously, a big, big clash for Adam Fanua Blake, who will make, I guess, the little trip across the pond later next year. He will come across to the Cronulla Sharks. But we'll talk more about this Warriors side before we talk about both sides. Talk to me about the Warriors. Talk to me about their squad and what you expect from this game. Yeah, look, you're going to miss uh, the big man, Chan Nickel Kustak, at the fullback role. So that's going to be a bit of an empty spot um, for this game. Um, you got Roger there who could play fullback for this game if you really need to, but I see more of a, a center now being that he's trained, played uh, preseason games in that role. So um, there's not much to sort of negative on this. Uh, they all around, they look all right. Um, one game shy of a grand final appearance last year. So uh, hopefully they come out and they can do the home crowd proud. Is the Wise bandwagon continuing this year? Obviously, they like you said they were they were one point away from the final, top four. Can they do it again? Uh, look, anything's possible. Um, any, anything's really possible. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I, I'm not starting the Wise um, train right now, but uh, I reckon if you go three games in and they're big results, I think um, the Wise will come back. And I guess, obviously, Sean Johnson, arguably most people thought he was going to win the Dally M last Rob, year. Rob, he didn't. Rob, Rob me and you Rob. both have our opinion that he was Rob. Rob, but obviously he didn't win the Dally M last year. Arguably 99% of listeners and 99% of YouTubers did think he deserved it. Do you see him having another season that good? And is Luke Metcalf the player next to him to draw? 